Hey folks, it's Frith Guy here, how you doing? I'm just hitching up all of these combines here, and I've got four uh, extra ones. Now we've already got two out in the field, so I'm going to take these four combines. And the problem with this particular dealership is it's got this high fence all the way around, and so I'm going to have to get all of these combines hooked up and get the headers onto trailers which means that it's going to take a little while so once i've got them all onto trailers i can then tow them out and take them to various different points so what i'm thinking is i don't have the other combines running at the moment i'm going to take a second combine down to this field i might actually run three combines in that field no no i won't that's going to be too many uh, we'll run two combines in that field i'm going to put one going around one of these canola fields here I'm going to put one going around this big field over here, and I'm going to take one up here and put it going around there. So we've got one, two, three, and four of the new combines, plus we've got these already running. So we're going to run six combines. We've currently got two tractors, and I'm hoping that the... Well, actually, no, two won't be enough. We'll need one down here running this field. We'll need one here running this central piece, and then I'm going to need at least one here to go for that and that there. I might be able to go between those two with one tractor. It might actually be better if I just get two tractors up there and another two over here. So I'm going to start getting this set up and I'll just sort of give you little clips every now and then of my progress as I go through and slowly get all of these combines hooked up and into place. And you'll probably notice that they all have different length spouts on the back. I decided to try out all the different lengths that are available. The only one that folds around the back of the combine is the 7XL that we bought in yesterday's episode, or at least in yesterday's episode, I should say. All the rest of them have a rigid spout, so they don't actually fold up when the combine folds up, um, which sort of gives you an indication of the length of the 7XL compared to the others. I'll just bring that in round there. Now, what, you, what the trick is with this one is you've got to... You get it sort of lined up so that you get the attachment figure. Now, strangely, I've got my steering wheel i've got a, a button on the steering wheel that i have used changed as a hop key to uh, attach things with the you know with any of the vehicles i can just press that one rather than having to press q on the keyboard i press the button on my steering wheel but when you've got the manual attachment mod on that doesn't actually work i put the manual attachment mod on and i can press q on the keyboard and it will work with the header to pick it up off the floor but the button i have on my steering wheel doesn't actually register and that's very bizarre to me it doesn't it doesn't work at all it seems to be the same with the front loader attachments and i'm not actually sure why that is the case but it is so yeah it's something that i've got to sort of live with right i just want one more of those and i will get some trailers as well so that i can start getting all of these loaded onto head trailers and out to the various fields right it's a little bit jammed up in here i've got one header on the trailer well i've got two headers on the trailers um but those headers over there are uh, the trailers are a little bit um squeezed together so i'm trying to i'm going to get this combine out of the way and take it out to a field so that it is ready to roll and then i'm going to go back and try to untangle the little bit of a mess that we've got accumulating in there i think that we'll put this one gee i'm going to run this one right down the road actually no this is quite a short spout on this one this one will go to the canola just up the road up here and i'll get this one oops i'm not going to ram the oncoming traffic here that is not the way to behave um i'll get this one up there and set up in the canola field and we can get the other ones out and hopefully untangle a little bit okay i didn't expect that um it happened before I could actually like uh, get it onto film, which was a bit of a shame. These header trailers were so close together that I dropped this header here onto the header trailer, which I thought was this one. And then when I pulled this one forward, the header stayed up in the air. It just stayed in the air. So I'm assuming that it was sort of held up in the air or locked in place by this one. But then once I'd moved forward, it just dropped down onto the ground. So that one decided over there that it actually didn't like it anymore. But this one over here decided that it wasn't going to keep hold of it anyway. And off they went. So what I'm going to do is rather than messing around with trying to unhitch yet again, if I park that one there, I can then go to, not that one, uh, that one, yes. I go to this one and I can put this one onto that header trailer there. And then I can use this combine for another header. I hope. Uh, when we start combining, I would politely request that you ignore the upside-down header trailer there. We had a minor disagreement about 
who would be allowed to have the header for the duration of this harvest. And it's now been settled, and I just ask you to look the other way. The combines are in the field and ready to go. I haven't actually started any of them yet. I'm just getting these tractors all lined up and I'm going to hitch up these trailers and we're going to shunt these out to various different places around where all the combines are. So let's load that one on there and then that one onto there and then finally that one onto... It's going to work. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. I don't want to be broadcasting. Uh, that one onto there, right. Okay, so I've got three New Holland T9s, and I don't want that one. I want that one. Three New Holland T9s out here. I've already got a New Holland T9 down in the southernmost field. These here I'm going to move out to various locations around so that they are ready to start um, unloading all of these combines. Uh, that one is going to park right there. Then... This next one is going to go just up the road here a little bit to... I think I just caught against the other one. Um, we'll bring this one through here, and it's going to go just up the road to the canola. And the combiner is sat up there ready and waiting. And I've actually got this on pounds. That's no good. Um, yes, I was recording some... Uh, I want that kilometres, and I want that in euros. There we go. Right. Yes, I was recording some Dowland Farm time-lapse uh, between the last Gorala episode and this one. I have to put that recording in whenever and wherever I can because um, otherwise I would never be able to get to it. I can't just sort of do it all in one sitting. I do have to sort of squeeze bits in here and there wherever I can fit it around all of the other recording that I do these days. So let me just stop that one right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this combine up. And we're going to get this one running, and I'm going to go back to the wheat field, and I'm going to get two combines running down there. So let's move this one up a little bit. We can unfold the combine, just like that. And this one is away, I think. Let me just... Oh, actually, let's just go into the settings. We want to make sure that we have this on 100%, and I will put the collision check on, and go OK. Uh, go there, and press H. Right, this is a three hectare field, so it's not particularly big. And I'm hoping it will at least be able to get round the first round without encountering too many problems. So that uh, we can carry on and do the rest of it. So let's start this one up. This one's all ready to go. I'm going to... Um, yeah, we've got two combines running in this field. They're on opposite sides of the field, but I think that's actually going to be okay. I don't think it's going to end up presenting us with any problems. So I'll just start that one up there. This is a, a 10 hectare field, this one was. There we go. Start that one in there. He should have the straw cut, uh, the straw swather on. Um, or the straw choppers turned off, I should say. And if I just quickly flick through the other combines... Oh, it's gone the wrong way. Uh, no, it's not that one. That one's full. Where's the last combine? Oh, the last combine is one that we've had for a while, isn't it? Or is it? I can't remember now. And if I start that one up, I'll swing him round just like this. And then I can press H once he's on this side. Oh, yeah, of course he's got to read the field again because we've um, it, we've exited the game since it was last used. So that one can carry on that way. Hopefully that uh, New Holland tractor isn't going to be in the way. Actually, it might be if I leave it there. So let me move this one back a little bit. And he should be out of the way of that combine as it comes on around the corner. We've now got to keep a close eye on the totals. Now, Helper G is already blocked by an object. I think we're going to be seeing Helper whatever is blocked by an object fairly frequently on this. This one here, I'm going to run this one out so that he's under that combine there and he can start unloading it. And then I'm hoping that one can carry on doing that field over there. Then we can go and sort out Helper G who is stuck. And then once we've done that one, we can get the other two combines running as well. So the main purpose of today is to try to combine as much as we can. We've got six combines. We've got a whole fleet. We've got one that we own. We've got five that we've leased. We've also leased in five, uh, no, four T9, New Holland T9s. We've got four of those in here. And let me do that. And then I'm going to go through. This one here is fine. Which way do I want to go? There we go. If I go onto this one and start it up. I'm hoping if I press H, it will just stop right here for a minute. 
finish unloading. Yes, it will. And then it will read the field and it will start combining. So we can leave that one to carry on there. And so we've got our combines here, right? That one there is the one. I need to move this tractor in a moment. We can start this one up a minute. So if I start unfolding that one. Uh, no, I want to unfold the actual combine, don't I? So yeah, just just ignore the header that's down there. That's um, we're just going to pretend that that didn't happen. So, um, it, was a, it was a minor disagreement. And if I start you up, I'm going to bring you round and put put this one into the crop, and then I'll start it here like this. Start that one there, and he should read, and away he goes. Excellent. So is that one going? Ah, I see. He's come round and he's caught the tree. He's going to do the same just up there. So what I'll do is I'll manually put it around just this little corner here and then we shouldn't have that problem uh, for the rest well for the rest of this field it should be okay it's just that corner there I think once we come up here we'll swing around here and then I think that's about all of the issues that we're going to encounter because uh, there was a tree stump somewhere on this corner as well if I can bring that one up there like that yeah there's the tree stump there and that is also going to cause us problems. So if I can get round that one, help us see how's a full grain tank. That's on. The, that's down on the wheat. So I can bring this one up here. Right, he should be okay now. He should be able to get round that corner without getting into any problems. So I can flick down through. Oh, we'll start this one up as well. That is next to the pig farm there. I'm going to go across the road. And I'm going to start in that corner over there. And. Let me start unfolding the harvester. So we'll bring this one in. I will manually drop this one in onto this side and bring it round so that we get it off the road and we don't dump a pile of straw onto the road. Then we can press H, let the field detection run, and that one is away. So everything is tickety-boo, and it's all running quite nicely. So we want to bring this back through now. This one here needs to run up the road over to the combine up there. We are probably going to be getting... It's, it's probably going to appear a little bit laggy um, fairly frequently now because we've got so many um, uh, vehicle extensions running. We've got the AI vehicle extension when we're using that on all the combines. The calculations that it's got to run while it's going around the corners does mean that you tend to get some lag spikes on it. So unfortunately, we've got nothing that we can do about that. I'm going to go back. Uh, that one's doing just fine. Oh, no, that one's going to get stuck now on that corner. Um, not that one. This is the one that I wanted to get to because it's going to get stuck on there. So let me just get it around this corner here. Put you in there. Take you around there and press H. And then I can go back to the next one that's going to get stuck, which is this one. And it's actually going around that corner. That's actually quite surprising to me that it's even managed to get that far that was quite impressive actually so let's just start that one up and just get it around this little bit here this is a little bit awkward this bit and as soon as we've done this tiny piece here i'm gonna have to go around that tree over there as well we've got more that have got a full grain tanks so we've got two of them now with full grain tanks which means that we're gonna have to start getting a move on with our new hollands the one thing with running this many combines is trying to keep up with tractors. And I did think that maybe we could run tractor, you know, just a few tractors going between the fields, but I really don't think that we'd be able to do that. And I'd like to spend a bit of time looking at the combines. I don't just want to be staring at the um, New Hollands, pretty as they may be. The the old T, the T9s. I mean, they are they are quite a beasty sort of looking tractor, aren't they? They're they're very impressive looking, and. To be honest, I think I'd like to try to use one a bit more. So I'm going to try... I'm probably going... I mean, I know that I've said that we're going to go for John Deere. So if I could find, like, a suitable John Deere, um, a bigger articulated steer one, we could use one of those in South America. But I am seriously considering adding a T9 to the fleet in South America. So let me know what you think of that. I mean, maybe the T9 is a little bit too big. I don't really know. Um, thoughts and comments about having a T9 in our fleet in South America or is there a particular articulated John Deere that you'd rather see me using right that one's full that one has just stopped um, why have you just stopped oh I see it's already started trying to creep in onto the corner there and that was enough to make it give up altogether so we just need to bring that one down and get it round this corner here and then it should be okay Bring you over there and sweep round the corner. Now, I realise that this would not be something you would do in real life. You don't turn sharp corners with a combine like this because 
it damages the header it damages all of those um pickup things that all of the 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 lifters on the front it would break all of them it snapped them right off because the crop's generally quite heavy so it, it would not work very well at all and it's going to get stuck on that tree over there so i'll tell you what we're going to get this combine here just around that next corner then we can leave this one alone we've got another one that's gotten stuck somewhere so if i press h there i can manually take it around this next little piece and as soon as we've gotten around that next tree and rock over there we can then skip over to the next combine i think we'll try and get one of the t9s racing through to um unload one of these combines a bit of a novelty actually getting some grain out of the combine i think it'd be is it going to be a good move forward i think certainly a step in the right direction and bring you round there right that one can carry on and i want to go towards some t9 so we've got one here we don't want that one and we don't want that one there we don't want that one either or that one's nearly full it's actually oh this one's stuck so let me just start this one up again and it's i think we might actually finish this field in a single pass so this combine is going to need to move on to the next field this is the only combine we've got that's got the terror tracks on it as well swing that one just in there like that and press h now is it going to get the entire thing in one pass it looks like it's going to get most of it you know it is going to get most of it so i want no i don't want that one i want to go this way through there nope not you and it's a problem with having purchased these tractors at various different times not everything is in a single group which makes it a little bit more awkward so we'll run this one through and we'll unload two combines gee i'm going to do this bit from in cab because um, for some reason i don't know why but the t9 does seem to lend itself reasonably well to in cab driving we, we've got a nice field of view on it and i don't feel all that restricted from inside here and uh, plus it's, it's quite good fun just the, the whole articulated steering thing it's um the, the way that you swing the wheel around like this i'm not going to do a lot already a few people said they really don't want me to do very much in a way of in cab driving when we get to south america and the vote was fairly strongly in favor of not doing it but um i will do the odd little bit to cater to the people who did say that they'd like some because there was more than i thought would like a little bit more in cab driving so i will do some i have not forgotten my um idea for doing these random disasters i'm going to do my absolute best to have random disasters up and running by next week well that should be the week after we'll, we're sort of setting the map up next week and then after we've set the map up next week the following week we will start instigating and bringing in these random disasters not always a disaster sometimes it's a random event that will happen rather than a complete disaster um you know we get a bonus um we can uh, we get a little bit of extra money or something like that. I'm not quite sure. So th there was some suggestions. I'm going to put these on the Facebook page. And so you can always go to the Facebook page and take a look. There is going to be, at some point, a website. We are looking at a website. I've got the domain name anyway. Um, Frithgar.com. And we're sort of looking at uh, getting a website up and running. So because I know that quite a few of you don't like Facebook and you don't want to use Facebook, you don't have accounts on there, which is fair enough. So for things like my upload schedule and stuff like that, rather than having to go to Facebook to have a look at that, I'm going to put that on the website. And then things like this random disasters and things like that, I can put those on there as well. So you've got one link you can follow. You don't have to log into Facebook. You don't have to follow a page or anything like that. It would just be frithgar.com. You can go and take a look at it all on there. But it's not ready yet. And it's probably not going to be up for a couple of months at the moment because we're very busy at the moment. And the person that is going to be helping me make the website is a very talented artist her links are actually in the description of every single video that i do lootlayer.com and the christmas period is her busiest time of the year so she's not got a lot of spare time at the moment and it's probably going to be january before we can really start seriously looking at um getting frithgar.com up and running properly because she's the one that is going to be helping me code it and get it all set up and um going in the first place so if you're interested in her um art if you're interested in the art what she does is she does a lot of pyrography which is you, you um you burn various designs into uh different wooden items she mostly makes uh, chests and 
different uh, things to accompany tabletop gaming such as Dungeons and Dragons and things like that so it's, it's very much a fantasy themed art that she likes to do um, it is absolutely fantastic Loot Lair has I've, I've been friends with her for many many years and Loot Lair has been involved with the channel We've, we've mentioned Loot Lair pretty much from day one on this channel. I've, I did used to have it in the um, opening sequence, but we decided to stop doing that just in case um, YouTube ever changed their policy on it. So rather than running at risk, she's got links in the description of every single video that I do. So if you want to go and take a look at it, please do. It's really good stuff. I've always been impressed by the artwork she can do. I genuinely struggle to draw stick men, so anything beyond a stick man is always impressed me. I'm, I'm, I'm just absolutely hopeless at art. I absolutely, I'm absolutely useless at it. I really am. Um, so you're never going to find any decent art coming from someone like me. It's just, it just doesn't happen. It's, that's not something that you'll ever see. Now, if we swing this one on round here, we can get this one loaded up. But yeah, the, the whole random disasters and stuff, I will try to put that up onto Facebook in the next week or so. And then obviously once we do get Frithgar.com up and running, which will be a very exciting time, I will then transfer everything over onto there so that you can go to Frithgar.com to check out um, any updates that might be coming. I'll, put, I'll keep the upload schedule on there. I did used to have the upload schedule pictured in the YouTube banner. I've decided against doing that because it's quite a hassle to have to remake the YouTube banner every time so um, and you know the update can change on a fairly regular basis um, so I figured that I'll stick it on Facebook for now and then once we get the website going you'll be able to go over there and see the latest developments on the upload schedule so I mean like this week we've just changed it we're not doing Destiny 2 anymore Destiny 2 has absolutely tanked nobody enjoyed watching that one well, I say nobody, I had like a few hundred views, and um, that to me means it's tanked. It's not enough for, um, for it to be a viable enterprise. I don't get very many views on my World of Warcraft videos, and that I can cope with because I know that World of Warcraft is not going to be very popular with my current audience, but I'm allowing myself one game per week, one episode per week of something that I know is going to perform very badly in regards to views. I'm choosing World of Warcraft for that because I love that game. I've played that game for nearly a decade and I just really enjoy... There's something about that game that has just really, really appeals to me personally. So that's the one I'm going to keep that does badly. And, um, so yeah, anything else I do, I need, to, I need to be doing stuff that is reasonably popular with people. So starting this week on a Friday to replace Destiny 2, we're going to be playing um, Oxygen Not Included. I'm going to start playing that game one episode per week and we'll take it from there and see what people think and how it performs. And I'm also going to be starting next week Stardew Valley. It's going to be three episodes a week to replace some of the Gold Rush episodes because we're running out of content with Gold Rush. So we're going to be doing three episodes a week of Stardew Valley and three episodes a week of Gold Rush. And I will alternate the days, so you'll be getting a gold. Ru your gold rush fix will be on Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and your Stardew Valley fix will be coming on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And I will no longer be doing three episodes on a Monday. I will be cutting that back to two episodes, which will be your usual Gorala episode. Well, actually, it won't be by that time. We'll be in South America. Um, no, we no. Next week we'll still be in Gorala, won't we? Next week we'll be in Gorala, but the following week we'll be in South America. So yeah, uh, we'll be doing that one on a Monday, and I will also be doing an episode of Banished on a Monday as well. But I don't have time to do three episodes for Monday. I don't do any recording on a Sunday, which is it's my one day off. It's the one day that I actually spend with my family, and i've had to eat into that a little bit in order to get three episodes up and ready for a monday and that's a no-go that's not happening i'm not going to keep doing that um you've got to you, i can't well most you, you understand i can't give up all of my family time in order to um just make videos and it's absolutely not going to happen i value my time with my family i value spending time with my kids 
and I'm not about to start sacrificing that in order to make one extra video a week. So unfortunately for you guys, that means you only get two on a Monday. But there's still more than I have been doing up until just a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. So you'd probably be happy anyway. <laughs> right. I've been talking a lot about non-farming simulator related stuff for a bit, so let's uh, concentrate on this. We've done reasonably well, I think, so far. We're going to just empty out this combine and the other wheat one. And we've got, I believe, one episode left here in Garala. We've only only the one. Now, why are you... Oh, I see. Um, it's because that... It's because of the angle of the spout. I was actually too far over for it to pick up properly. But if I do it like this, we should be okay. So, yeah, we've got one episode left after this, I think. And then we get the new DLC. And so we'll be starting on that. And, I mean, I don't know what time it's going to be released. Maybe there'll be another Gorala episode. Maybe there won't. I don't know at the moment. So we'll wait and see. But at the moment, we'll sort of... We'll, uh, we'll work on it being one more episode after this. And I'm... What I'm planning to do for the final episode is play around with the trains. We might have the combines still running in the fields, but the majority of it is going to be using trains. We haven't used the trains on this map at all, and I've had a lot of requests for that. Several people pointing out that we really should be using the trains. So we will go and do that. Now, some of you expressed disappointment that I'm not staying here long enough to finish the harvest, and it kind of feels like we're... Um, we're abandoning the project halfway through. Um, I would just point out that the whole idea with this harvest was just to try to experience some bigger machinery working here in Gerala to compare to the smaller machinery that we'd already done. I never set out to complete a whole harvest here. We will set out to sort of complete something a little bit more thoroughly in um, South America. Obviously, we're going to be doing sugarcane. We're going to be taking a good look at sugarcane. Um, now, at the moment, I'm thinking, I, I don't know how long it takes to do a sugarcane harvest. I don't know how quick the um, harvesters work. So I don't really know how many hectares of sugarcane we should put down right at the beginning. Now, the, the harvester looks fairly small. i got to be honest, it doesn't look particularly big. So I think it's going to take a while to harvest any sugarcane. So I think we'll start off with a single field of sugarcane. We won't start off with very much. Um, one, maybe we could do two. We could have one that's already established and we could have one that is not yet established and that we've got to start working our way, you know, we'll start planting and so on. So we, we can kind of, we can work at it from two different stages and then we can sort of take it from there. But I will try to complete any harvest and anything like that that we do in South America. I just want to look at the map a moment to see where is the best place to go and tip some of this grain because we've got the... We've got the train station. You've got a grain elevator down there. Um, you've got the train station. Well, there's a transport company is all the way over there. Let's go to the trains a minute and we'll see what those are. Because I'd like to... I'm thinking that we should be tipping some of this stuff into a train station rather than at um, back at the yard. Because that way it's there ready and waiting, available for um, anything that wants it. Right, here's the train. And... Right, I don't think that there's anything there. If I press R, these are all empty. So we've got farm silo, 500,000 litres. And they're all empty. So that's the farm silo. So it's not the si It's not the same silo that is anywhere else. It's not the same silo that um, we're tipping in at the actual farm. We've got one completed there. Where is this in relation? Oh, I see. There's the, the dealership is through there, isn't it? I think. Bring the map up a minute and we'll see where we are. We are oh, we're here, right? I see, yes. Um so we've got our tractor down here. We actually want to go past the farm and we want to go on up and it's just north of the canola area there. So we're gonna start tipping stuff there rather than at the yard, and then hopefully we can keep everything moving. So um let me go through we've got that tractor there. Uh, let me go through some more tractors. We've got this one. That combine still hasn't run. We'll need to do something with that in a minute. Um nope. We don't want that one. I want to get... Right, if I take this one, I'll just move this one over next to that combine. And that one can get that one unloading. And then we can move around to another one. We've got uh, one of those is saying finished. I think it's just it's just the one that's saying finished. There's another one that is about to be full anyway. So let me bring this one over here. Park you under that spout there. Right, you're good to go. And then we've got this one here, which is... This is canola... 
Oh, he's saying finish just because he's driven into a post up there, I think. Yes, he has. He's driven into a post up there. So if I bring this one up round, we can empty this one out at the same time as move it round that post. Ah, it's the one that we came round last time. It didn't quite make it round the rock just there. So if I bring this tractor up here and stop right there, rather abruptly, rather, I should say. Um, he's going. We get this one started up. Spout out. Bring it back a little bit and we can unload this. There's 70% in there, so it is a fair bit. Get this one unloaded and then we've got a couple more that we need to deal with. And then we can get that full trailer of wheat, take that over to the train station and tip it out there. And then we can run that one back again. We've got more grain at the farm anyway that we're going to want to be moving. We'll probably do that with one of these tractors and these trailers. I'm quite liking the idea of using the fleet of T9s until we leave this map. So let me just start that one up again. Moving it. I only just got caught on that rock. I'm going to have to manually move it over past this point anyway. And I suspect it's going to get stuck up there on that next telegraph pole. But we won't worry about that for a moment. If I just bring this over like that there and then dance it round here. There we go. Bring you in sharp like that. Not quite. There we go. And we're good to go. Right, let's let that one carry on and we can run to the next one. That one's good to go. This one is full. Right, so I want to go back this way now. I want that one. That one's fine. This one here is full. Look at all these combines. This combine's running everywhere. So that one there I want to move. Get that one underneath. That combine's just about finished anyway. So we can just park this one underneath the corner. And I'm hoping that it's not going to be in the way of anything. Because it's right out on the corner. That's going to make it a little bit more awkward, I think. So bring that one over to there and stop. Right, you should be fine. And now we start flicking through all of them. Right, uh, this one here, if I stop this one a minute and I press B, I can manually take this combine on round the telegraph pole. I'll use the other one just to tidy up that last little bit. This one comes out here and we can get this one emptied out. Bring that back round this way. Like that. Come into there. And then I can just press H and he can carry on. He's almost full anyway. What's going on with that? Oh, I see. He's just moved forward a little bit. So he, he's going to be okay. And I want to get this one. Just got to tidy up a little bit on the edge. And then I can go up behind it and it should stop. These combines are going to need to be emptied. See, it, it's not very easy. We've got so many bits in the fields. It's quite. It's a lot more difficult to juggle these combines than you'd think. Uh, you know, you, you sort of think, oh yeah, we'll just keep them running and you just move the tractors out as they fill up. Having the wheat, if it was all canola, it would probably be easier. But because it's not all canola, because we've got this whole thing with the um, with the wheat going on as well and all of the bits in the fields, it, that's what's sort of taking the time. That's what's giving this a lot more of a challenge than I thought that we would have. So let me go through. I'm not going to start another combine yet. Uh, that one... He can carry on and do that just fine. This one here is okay. That one, yeah, he can stay there. We've got a combine there. That, yeah, that one's going to carry on. This one I need to keep running. Let me back up and grab that last little bit there. This combine's going to stop in a minute again because it's going to run out of crop to harvest. But we'll worry about that in a minute. And then I want to go to the full tractor and trailer and I want to get that tipped up at the station. And we're not going to have time to do very much more, I don't think. I think that's kind of about it for this episode. So let me just get that one going there. He's full. That one, I haven't got a tractor down there anyway. So I need, I need to get this tractor moving so that I can empty out those two combines down in the big field. So this one here needs to go to the train station, which is out this side. And it's even a struggle for this tractor to pull this trailer. I think the trailer isn't quite balanced right. Because it seems odd that this tractor... I mean, what is the horsepower of this tractor? It's, it's something redonkulous, isn't it? Let me just take a quick look a minute. Um, the horsepower of this tractor... I've got the full upgrades on them. and uh, It's that one. Their T9 with the big engine. It's a 557 horsepower tractor. I've got the wheel weights as well to help pull me down. And it's genuinely struggling to pull this trailer around the corners. So, I do think that this trailer isn't quite balanced right. I mean, 
maybe I've got this wrong. Maybe this track, maybe this tractor is too small for this. Maybe we need like a 700 horsepower tractor for this trailer. But I don't reckon. I I suspect that the trailer isn't quite balanced right for the um for the game. I I think that there is. I think it's slightly out on like the calculations for everything that needs to be set up for it and you know, all the calibrations, everything like that. It's. I know it's a complicated and difficult business getting it all set up, and I'm in awe of anybody that can make a mod from scratch it's just quite a phenomenal achievement but i do think that this one isn't quite balanced right for the game because i'm sure that this trailer ought to be able to be pulled by a 550 horsepower tractor i mean what's that tractor what's the weight of that tractor that tractor is going to be a fairly substantial weight as well so it's it's got to be able to fit right if i bring this one in here is it going to be able to tip? That's the next thing. Because if I lift that one up, that is going to jam against those roof rafters and bad things are going to happen. It's going to be fun watching it, though. It's definitely going to be fun watching it. So let's see what happens with this trailer. I've, it's difficult because I've got this the view under here. It's going to be difficult to see it. The trailer is over to one side. Is it going to jam? Is it going to catapult it out through the roof? Or is it going to crash the game entirely? The big question is about to be answered. Right, that's jamming it in there. It's... um. It's kind of pushing it forward. And now it's just going crazy. Yeah, we're going to end up being catapulted out of the map entirely in a minute, aren't we? No, it's still tipping it out. Is it tipping it on the ground or is it... Um, I don't know what it's doing. Oh, it's now moved it back so far that it's not going to tip at all. And um, I'm, <laughs> I'm fairly certain that this tractor is not supposed to do this either. Something tells me that this ain't quite right. <laughs> this, is, this isn't quite right. Uh, yeah. Right, this, this trailer doesn't seem to be the best one to use for tipping in a place like this. So I'm curious, is there somewhere else that we could go and tip? Is there another train station that we could use that's reasonably close by that we could use to do the tipping? Um... There isn't one there. I mean, you've got the grain elevator, but I don't think that's like a, a place where you can tip with your tractor. You've got a grain elevator over here. Again, I don't know if that's somewhere that I can go with the tractor. I think this might be the only location that we can tip with a tractor and trailer, in which case we would need the um, the cramper trailers in order to be able to do it because you wouldn't be able to do it with this. Let's see if we can get out of here. Well, yes, we can. So, I mean, if we were to do this little bit by little bit and I tipped, you know, just tip a little bit because it, it will allow most of the grain to come out and then tip again and then you can just sort of lower it back down and you could do it again so i mean we could do it we can use this point it's just that we can't just do it in in, in one go because <laughs> that really didn't work very well did it right i really have run out of time now I've, I've gone way over time i think and we've done quite a bit of combining i'll try to keep the combines running a little bit in the next episode but um like i said we're going to take a good look at the trains in the next episode and sort of see what we can do with those and where they go and where we can go and tip and so on and so forth and try to sort of explore what that aspect is available before we leave this map and that really is then that's going to be it that's going to be the final episode that we do here in Garala. i really hope you've enjoyed this series unfortunately i have been unable to update this to the latest version of Garala, so i'm not going to be releasing this save game file um, so I'm really sorry to everybody that was really wanting to get hold of this one. I'm still trying to get the Texas map uploaded, but so far I've had no luck. Um, so we may have to look at um, getting it somewhere else. I don't know if it's um, something to do with my files or if it's just the FSUK isn't taking any anything at the moment. But I will keep trying with that one. You should be able to get the Texas one at least. Um, but it's just it is unfortunate you won't be able to get this map. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.